Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These are the last days we pursue and uh, signs and wonders are matching that we are living in the last days. Time will delay no longer. Christ is at hand. Let's be prepared for the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So for everything under the sun, there is time. There is time to be born. And there is everything time. For time is given. Why we were born in this world? We are born to be victorious. Not to be defeated. We are born to defeat the struggles we face. We are born to defeat the reality we face with fuller confidence. So we are not here by accident. God has predestined us. God has called us. God has named us before we were formed in our mother's womb. So we don't need to worry about anything. Probably like there are many giants who, is, who are threatening the godly every day on various grounds. We don't need to worry about it. As long as we are in the God's fold, nothing to worry. As we committed our lives unto God, we rededicated our lives unto God, nothing to lose, nothing to worry. Nothing will shake us. And But many times in the world of strife and sorrow, we are often disturbed. We are often troubled. We are often feeling defeated, dejected, frustrated, depressed and enslaved by the reality we face in the selfish will and the carnal nature and everywhere when according to our perception there is huge chaos and havoc and there is a vacuum in everybody's heart to seek the Lord. If there is a God, how these things are happening? God is love. How God failed to demonstrate his love towards the humanity? Plenty of questions we may have. But we are born to be victorious, to conquer. How can we be victorious? How to get rid of all the struggles, all the uh, reality we face. How to get rid of this? How to overcome? Only thing we have to live above ourselves. These many days, down to the decades, we have failed in many areas. But we have to, as a result, we are here to correct the strategies we have used that has become wrong. Our, and fix our eyes while we do, while we pull on, when we carry on the same duties, we have to fix our eyes on the author and perfecter of lives that is Jesus of Nazareth. We have to fix our spiritual eyes as well as the flesh bodily eye on Jesus Christ, the victory, victorious God. Who gives victory in everything? We cannot, we cannot earn victory by ourselves, by our good virtues. But the victory belongs to God. And when we rely on God and the victory, God's victory come unto us. The victory come to us. Revelation 21.7. This is the key verse for this today's meditation. Revelation 21.7. Those who are victorious will inherit everything. Those who are victorious will inherit everything. I have made a partition in this Bible, with this verse, two, two partitions. Victory, how to be victorious. And then a victorious person, what the victorious person will gain, will get. Now the whole theme of our message is how to be victorious. And what else, on what we need to get victory. We need to be victorious. 
and uh, this there are three areas we need to focus on to be victorious three areas what are the three areas victory from the world victory from satan and victory from death victory from the world victory from satan victory from the death and one more victory from the flesh i i took this concept i have added this concept to, to the victory from the world so three concepts victory from the world jesus in his discourses um, he said according to john 16:33 in this world of strife and sorrow you have to go through troubles tribulation this is appointed one but i have overcome this world i have overcome this world if you believe you will be able to overcome this world if you trust me you will definitely be victorious while you overcome this world and by whom the victory is given victory is given you we are born to be victorious and christ the forerunner of the human race he paved the way for victory and he he was he was a victorious king and he is a victorious king the victory he earned through the cross and while by we have here we can earn the victory roman 8:37 says in all these things we are more than conquerors through christ jesus without jesus there is no victory as we are aware the horses are horses are getting ready for battle but the victory belongs to god the victory is in the hands of god and jesus through the cross he has earned the victory for the human kind and if we believe jesus he took all our infirmities and diseases on the cross he took all our sins and trespasses on the cross automatically the victory Jesus earned will belong to us through the Christ Jesus we have received the victory second corinthians second chapter verse 14 in christ we are victorious in christ we are victorious the first victory from the world job book of job 7 11 says do do not mortals have service on earth do do not mortals have hard service on earth it means everyone who is born into the world they have to go through some sort of struggles hard service they have to perform that is an appointed one for every human being job 924 says the world is evil why jesus said i have overcome this world because the world is full of evil and wicked and jesus said i have overcome this world and you will be able to overcome this world the earth is given in the hands of the wicked it is written job 924 and revelation 129 says an ancient serpent ancient serpent it has tempted Eve on the garden of eden the ancient serpent called devil otherwise called satan leads the whole world astray that is written in the scripture found in the scripture revelation 12 9 and first john 2 16 for everything in the world for everything in the world what is what are things in the world lust of flesh lust of flesh lust of eyes pride of life three main things are found or seen or disturbed every now and then the god given creature creatures who what is the lust of flesh lust of eyes lust of pride pride of life lust of flesh we know as long as the blood is in the flesh it has its own effect effect of being tempted effect of tempting the people that's the reality so we need to overcome first john 2:16 everything in this world this is the world is filled with this world 
and God Jesus said I have overcome this world and lustful eyes lust of eyes our eyes should be cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus when if we want to overcome the world our, we have to dedicate our flesh dedicate the whole body as a whole burnt offering sacrifice dedicate our eyes unto God and we have to surrender our lives to keep Lord keep us keep me away from the pride of life it's a temporal life and what, what, what I will gain if I am proud so pride of life these things to be eliminated it, it will come not from the father but from the world it is very clear lust of eyes lust of the flesh and the pride of life comes from the world not from the father almighty so we are here to overcome we are here to overcome how to overcome by clinging oneself by clinging us we have to cling unto the word of god what word of god says romans 6 14 sometimes it is very critical when we yield our flesh as it goes automatically we will commit sin when we yield our eyes as it goes definitely no doubt we will commit sin we will fall we will fall and if we allow the pride to enter into our life automatically we will be against the word of God against God and we will definitely commit mistakes commit sin in the presence of the Lord and to avoid all such things what do we do we need to keep the word of God the word of assurance in our hearts and minds there are many um, word of assurance given in the Bible and one is Romans 6 14 you don't worry my dear children because you are under grace you don't worry about the struggle you are facing the lustful eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life but what you do you rely on me you rely on my grace I will give you unmerited favor I will give you the strength through the blood of blood of Jesus I have shed on the cross you look at me when you look at my sufferings on the cross it will be a salvation to you and it will indirectly help you to overcome the sin because you are not bound by the law and you are bound by the grace and grace comes from me you look unto me my dear friend you can look unto me my dear beloved so this is the call of God and if we listen incline our ear unto the call of God and we will overcome the sin and once it is overcome that's how we are called the people of salvation joy of salvation we have received the joy of salvation and uh, it is written since we are under grace sin will not overrule you sin has nothing to do with you sin has its own work in the world but though you are living in the world and you don't belong to this world you belong to God the eternal kingdom and Galatians 5 22 again first one you keep the word of God in your heart the promising words word of assurance he, Jesus said you will not sin will not over, overcome but you will overcome sin why how when you cling unto my grace so my grace is sufficient to you don't look at the sea, don't look at the waves and the rugged waves and the rugged um, sea just look at my grace on the cross second thing to escape to overcome the sin Galatians 5 22 be filled with my, with the spirit with with the fruit of the Holy Spirit whenever we do something for the betterment of the household for the betterment of the society at large we need to assess ourselves we need to introspect ourselves whether I bear fruit while I do this task which is being assigned for me to do so what is that the fruit of the Holy Spirit as we are well aware that we are expected to bear fruit that is love joy peace long suffering <coughs> gentleness faith meekness temperance these three these nine fruits should be manifested in all our activities so when we do that when we 
keep such nine gifts in mind and heart, we will never be stumbled. And then um, another thing, 1 John 2.15 Do not love the world or love anything in the world. It is written again clear. Do not love the world. 1 John 2.15 Do not love the world or do not love anything in the world. If anyone loves the world or loves anything in the world, the person, uh, the love of God is not in him. The love of God is not, love of, love of the Father is not in him. It is very clear. So the, we, are, we are encouraged not to love the world, not to love the things which is in the world. If we do that, the love of Father will not be with us. So we are expected to please God by doing the will. And 2 Peter 2, 3, 10, 2 Peter 3, 10 says, In the day of the Lord, the earth and everything in it will be burned up. In the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is coming. As this, as we know that these are the perilous days, these are the lost days, the signs and wonders are happening to ratify that these are the lost days. And the word of God again ratify this. In the day of the Lord, the earth and everything in it will be burned up. The things which is seen in the world under the sun, it will be no more. It will be completely upside down. It will not be seen anymore. That's how the things are going to come. Such things are going to come. First John 4.4 4. One who is because another thing to overcome the sin is always recite the word of God within yourself. What, to, what, what is the word of God helps us? What are the word of God which helps us to overcome the sin, overcome the world? We are under grace. Sin will not overrule us. And we are filled with the gift, fruit of the Holy Spirit and we will expose the gift of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Sin will not overrule us. And then again, we have to be clear. We, are, we should ensure that the things which is seen in the world will perish, will no more be seen. So it is going to come to an end. So by which we can overcome this world. Another one, we have to uh, be assured. We have, we have to ensure that the, the, the one who is in the world, one who is in me, is greater than one who is in the world. One who is in the world. Who is in the world? Satan is in the world. But we should ensure, we should again and again recite this, uh, uh, confess this word. The one who is in me is greater than one who is in the world. And again, I can do anything, one who strengthens me through Christ, Jesus Christ, through Christ, Jesus Christ, I can do. Like that, the promising verses we have to recite every now and then. And then, if we, if we do that, we will overcome the world as Jesus overcame. And now, the second point, the victory from the wicked schemes of Satan. Victory from the Satan. We are born to be victorious. In, in the world and in the Satan and we are here to overcome Satan we are here to defeat Satan victory from the wicked schemes of Satan to uh, overcome Satan we should know the schemes of Satan in what are the areas he is weak or he is strong and what are the areas I am weak or I am strong we have to assess, we have to introspect before we attack Satan. Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. To defeat the work of the devil, we have to be strong. We should not say that I am weak, I am feeble, and I don't have any gift and talents, and I am not well versed, and I am not used to do that. I am feeling little giddiness, I am going to lay down, and I am not able to do that. I, you find some other people. We cannot make any justification like that in this uh, dejected languages. We should not be uh, in a negative way. So while we do that, we are ready to, we are in the battlefield. While we are in the battlefield, we should be alert and we should know the strength of God. Even God has used the little small boy Goliath, small boy David to kill Goliath, to finish Goliath, the giant. So how many giants? No matter. But God's spirit is with us. 
So be strong. Ephesians 6 12. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And Ephesians 6 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Put on the full armor of God. You take the shield and buckler. You be alert and you be aware of the wicked schemes of the devil. And God will fight for you ultimately. And basically, the devil he is a liar. He may pretend himself that or himself that he is somebody. He can disturb the people. He can keep the people under put under. He can put the people under fear, under tension, tension, stress, and under confusion, utter confusion, and and then the uh, dejected the languages, and then inferiority complex, and then ultimately it is gone. So that is the wicked schemes of devil. So uh, we should be aware that the devil doesn't have any truth. He is a liar. His father is a liar. His whole heredity is a liar. Lying for heredity. So we don't need to uh, have any insecure feeling while thinking of Satan. Satan, he is a defeated one. Already defeated one. He has, Jesus shed all his blood for us. So through the blood of Jesus, when we sprinkle the blood on the Satan, he will be no more. He will go away. He will flee away. He will go and seek other people. So when we are strong, he is not able to fight against us because the one who is in the one who is in us is um, above the one who is in the world. So he will know our strength when we are in Christ. So he is a liar. John 8:44. And uh, he is a, a thief, he is a robber, and uh, he is a, a killer, he is a thief. John 10.10 10 says he is a thief. And Luke 10.19, Jesus says, I have given my authority, I have given my authority to trample on snakes, to trample on scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. This is the word of God. You take the word as a shield and buckler. You take the word as a strong tower, as a refuge. Take the word and throw the word towards Satan. And he will flee away. Jesus handles God's word to drive out demons. And he was away. So Jesus, God says, I have given... The authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and you are here to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you and Revelation 12 11 says they the disciples the the people the godly they triumphed over Satan by two things they have overcome the enemy the devil by the Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, word of God and blood of Jesus. These are the two important things. It is written in Revelation 12, 11. They triumphed over Satan by the blood of Jesus. When you are disturbed on any cause, on any ground, you use the word of word, blood of Jesus. Lord, I am awake now. I sprinkled the blood of Jesus who shed the, his blood on the cross for me. I sprinkled the blood on the devil, the Satan. It may be in the form of sickness, maybe in the form of pain and confusion, in the form of insecure feeling, in the form of dejection, dejection in the form of inferiority complex, whatever it may be. You throw the blood of Jesus on Satan. He will flee away. This is the way you can conquer the evil you can you can defeat the devil or satan by the precious blood of jesus and by the word of testimony word of their testimony testimony in a sense we have many we have received many blessings from god at times we were um, we were neglected we were ignored by the people and uh, we were in need of the important things physically spiritually and we were, we were completely ignored. But at the same time, how we are survived out of these situations. And that's, that has become a testimony. Once I am a stranger, 
once i was an alien now god has brought me here and he has lifted me from the miry clay now i am something i am somebody i know something for the betterment of the society and i am used by god this is the testimony the disciples overcame the devil the, the satan by the blood of jesus and by the testimony they have the word of god and colossians 2:15 look at jesus on the cross the life of jesus triumph he nailed all our sins and trespasses and we are victorious and then ephesians 6:16 take the shield of faith you don't worry about anything but keep on faith put on faith put on faith put your faith on god god will take care of me god has protected me god has engraved me god has forgiven all my sins like that you have to uh, recite the faith you have luke 827 the legend the legend he was he led an ugly life the the people who are possessed by evil they will their life will show that what kind of person they are in the in the house everything will be in a, in a disorder way in the place where they are everything will be in a dilapidated condition so the jesus they will lead an ugly life and jesus send him out send the legion out and he was well protected jesus defeated and james 4 7 obey the word of god and resist the evil he will flee away first john 3 8 follow jesus who came to destroy the satan and he has destroyed the satan simple way to overcome the satan is to remind the word of god even how many times you remind it will be helpful to you i know this word so i don't need to remind this but it is not it not is not like that so ultimately it is none of our business when the holy spirit will come upon us and he will take the responsibility exodus 14 14 says you will have no you have nothing to do with the battle battle belongs to god and uh, god will give you victory and victory belongs to god and god will you will uh, i will fight for you god will fight for you and you will be still that's the that's the message we have received and uh, the, the devil he doesn't have any hold on the people who are created in the image of god because jesus has already defeated the work of the devil and god the father sent the Jesus only to defeat the work of the Satan, and he has already completed. We are acknowledging that's the thing, and we are able to uh, overcome that Satan. Third point I have taken victory from the fear of death. First, first uh, Corinthians fifteen twenty six says. First point uh, the. Um, we are victorious in christ we are victorious that's the title of the message under that we have um, we, we have overcome the world victory from the world victory from satan and victory from fear of death fear of death death is there the last enemy to be defeated is death so if a person is born first year second year third year like that like that it go on go on keep on going on and uh, as he as a person grows he has to have some sort of ailments in his body and ailments will be increasing day by day and the last enemy to be defeated is death it will death will be stopped and uh, death in a sense normally death denotes the eternal hell and jesus took the eternal condemnation on the cross and even after death in the literal death there is life the real life starts from that point so what what is what it is written the last enemy to be, to be defeated is death first corinthians 15:26 revelation 1:18 jesus holds the keys of death and hades Jesus is every, everything he is authorized he is uh, he is having everything he is having the hold on everything he has the key of death and uh, hates hell so just trust god 
Jesus is within me. Jesus is with me as Emmanuel. And he has cleansed me by his blood. I am cleansed by precious blood of Jesus. And by confessing this, we will have the uh, overcoming spirit to defeat the fear of death. Fear of death is cruel. Fear of death is uh, pathetic. So, as long as we are in the spirit of God, we will our heart will rejoice, our spirit will rejoice. But if we have some disturbances due to um, some sort of sins and trespasses entered, automatically we will be perplexed and we will lose our temperament and uh, uh, automatically some sort of fear will occupy us, occupy our minds and hearts. And we will, be, uh, we'll be, we'll become nervous. So to avoid all such things, God has given his victory over the fear of death. When, whenever it comes, let it come on any day, any time, according to the will of God. I am ready because I am in Christ. I am ruled by Christ. I am cleansed by Christ. I am ready. If we have that, the fear of death will go away. And 1 Corinthians 15, 54. The death has been swallowed up in victory. On the death of Christ on the cross, the natural death will be, the death in the sense, the eternal death, the, the, the spiritual death will be swallowed up on the cross by Jesus. And we don't need to worry about death or fear of death. So God has earned that privilege for us. When we trust God, we will overcome the fear of death. Isaiah 58 to 12 says, Jesus poured out his life unto death. For the ransom for many, he bore all our sins and trespasses. Jesus poured out his life unto death. His life unto death. He, he was crucified and he died on the cross. Died in sense, our place. He became substitute for us. And by believing that, we will overcome the fear of death. We will be bold enough to say that, oh death, where are you? It, Jesus loudly confessed this one. And uh, Romans 6, 23 says, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin were born by Jesus. Naturally, the work and its stages, wages of sin is death. And if, if it is the, if it, if it is, if, if it, that is the case, we may all have to face death. So instead of we under condemnation, Jesus took our condemnation on the cross and he has set us free. Now we are freed and we, are, we have defeated the fear of death. Death and the fear of death. We don't need to worry about the fear of death. John 11.25 says, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he will live. He or she will live. I am the resurrection. So the one who believes me, they will have life. He will have life. Finally, Revelation 1.18. Jesus said, I was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. I am alive forevermore. My dear friends, we are born, we are here to be victorious. In Christ, we are victorious. Victorious on what? Victory from the world, victory from Satan, and victory from the fear of death, and victory from death. And we are free, we are set free. If we believe, if we trust the word of God, if we trust the blood Jesus shed down the cross, if we trust the word of God, definitely we are victorious. And God has defeated the work of the devil on the cross. And we don't need to fight against the devil. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit. And God, the word of God says, Exodus 14, 14, you will be still, God will fight for you. I have fought for you. You be still. So we are like an instrument used in the hands of God. And Jesus had performed the salvation already. We are entitled to defeat the world. We are entitled to defeat Satan. We are entitled to defeat or overcome the fear of death. May God help us to continuously grow in the knowledge of 
God and God's word. God be with you and God bless you. Amen.